make some noise if this is a strike. Got a shot at it. Yes! Got a hit on him! Oh, wow! Candleton Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candleton Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Time again for Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. This is our semifinal week, week three in this latter series, as we move ever closer to finding out who that fifth qualifier will be for our 1991 Tournament of Champions. And we've got three bowlers left and all of them tough ones, and uh, especially the Steve Reno. Uh, last week, uh, two weeks ago, 4.45. Last week, 4.35. So if that's it, he expects 4.25 this week. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's see if that's enough, first of all. But let's meet our two bowlers. If you've missed it the last two weeks, he's been putting on quite a show here on Stars and Strikes. His uh, first appearance is here. And as Dan mentioned, a 4.45 and then a 4.35 last week for two straight wins. Let's have uh, you meet him again, reintroduce him to you from Southbridge, Massachusetts, our number four seed, Steve Reno. Okay, and comes in averaging 131, and he's averaging all of that on the show. 191 for a high single, uh, 481 for high triple, and 652 to get on the show. Well, Steve has done very well here on Stars and Strikes so far, and the man he'll be bowling against today has also done very well here on the program. He's uh, got 21 wins altogether in his appearances here on Stars and Strikes. From Claremont, New Hampshire, with us once again, Steve Vadney. And Steve comes in averaging 128, 191 for a high single, 493 for a high triple, and his qualifying score was 679. We have bonus money coming up, of course, both for the bowlers and for you, too, perhaps, if we have your postcards for the bonus ball contest. We'll be telling you more about that and tell you a little bit more about the details of uh, all these extra things that we have going on. Don't forget, uh, next week we're going to be determining which one of our remaining bowlers will get into the Tournament of Champions. We'll bring you up to date on all that as well. But we're going to get this started between Steve Reno and Steve Vadney right after these messages. Don't go away. Well, after two weeks in this latter series, it's been all Steve Reno so far. He beat Glenn LeBlanc two weeks ago, and last week he knocked off Steve Lavery. Today he gets a shot at Steve Vadman. And then only one Steve will remain <laughs> for our championship match against Paul Berger next week. So Steve Reno to get us started. Big crowd. Huge crowd on here. Oh, this one. Well, deja vu. Last week, Steve Reno and Steve Lavery combined for 13 strikes. <laughs> one short of the record here on Stars and Strikes. You see his uh, average at 131. And. When Doug does some quick math, we'll tell you it's uh, a little higher than that on the show. And that's why. Strike on spare. And we're off and running. There you see the replay. Get out of there, 8-pin. And finally does. Spare and strike. And he's averaging on the show 146.6. So uh, I'll tell you, he's been doing some bowling. And this man's been doing some bowling on Stars and Strikes practically since we began. He didn't like the final twist of that wood in front of the 6 and 10. But no problem. Steve Vadney making his 31st appearance here on Stars and Strikes. His record to this point, 21 and 9, which is good enough for the Cy Young Award, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, 21 and 9, and, if, and if, correct me if I'm wrong, but the last two appearances he was defeated uh, the first week. So I'm about to look that up. In fact, he's lost four in a row. He's lost four in a row. He was 21 and 5 at one point. Steve leads in all of those categories that you would think. Most appearances on the show with now 31. Most wins with 21. This is on a strike for Steve Reno.
Stewart looking for $25 in bonus money, and he's got it just clipping the head pin on the way by. Just caught it. Not even enough to deflect the ball. <laughs> and very quickly, three marks in a row. Start the match, 50 through three, working on a spare. And it's my imagination, or is he throwing the ball a lot harder than he was the last couple of weeks? Seems it. Still as accurate, though. Two, so far. four, and six. Let's see. Uh, Five through four for Steve Reno. <laughs> Triangle for Steve Vadney, three, five, six. the six pin. Steve Adney and his wife Annette live in Claremont, New Hampshire with daughter Jennifer and son Stevie. Steve works for Sturm Ruger. Does a lot of his bowling at the Sunset Lanes. Ooh, close to cutting that two pin into the 610. He's still looking at three pins. <laughs> 22 pin advantage for Steve Reno. It's not Steve Arino, that's Steve Reno. <laughs> did I say Steve Arino? No, it no, just sounds sound like very that. similar sometimes. <laughs> Steve Arino. <laughs> no, you slid that uh, four pin over and right next to the seven. Watch out. Oh, the wood cost him. If the wood hadn't been there, he might have been able to fly that three pin over. I want to pick up on a story that we actually started, it might have been a couple of months ago here on the show. And we're not going to go back to the beginning, so. <laughs> <laughs> it would take too long. It was about a month ago or so, I guess it was in February, but. Remember we were having a discussion about the origins of terms, what people call certain things, and we started to talk about the hammer for a strike. Right. And we were wondering how that started. Oh, here at Park Place Lanes, I ran into a guy by the name of Bob Dicker, who was here on the program. This goes back several years, probably to 84, the first year we were on the air. And he said that one of the guys that was here watching him that day that he was on was a guy named Gordon Crawford from Canada, who's been using that expression, he said, for about 20 years now. And, that, and Bob said apparently Gordon was the first person he had ever used heard use that term. So he doesn't know if uh, Gordon came up with it, but uh, he's been using it for a long time. You think he used it here and somebody heard him? And it well, yeah, he said, that he said that that day when Bob was on the show, he was, he was using that, uh, that term. Oh, what a shot by Steve Adney. Beautiful cut shot. His Very second nice. mark, yep. Very nicely done. And a sliding nine drop. Cuts the lead to 13. And a chance to put two in a row.
Yes. Long wait, but he was right on the heart of the five pin. So he reduces the lead now to 12 pins, and he'll cut into that even more when he fills that spare. Steve Reno up for lane, uh, box seven and eight. Game number one, if you just joined us. That's a seven drop and a sliding five pin again, which makes this shot a little bit easier. Well, but a lot easier if it fell, it fell down. <laughs> Under the circumstances, I guess we'll say it's easier. <laughs> Especially since if it had fallen that way, it probably would have taken out the six pin yeah. as well. But Steve got it for a spare anyway. Steve told us on the program last week he and his wife Kathy are expecting their first child in May. Steve works as a machine operator at United Lens Company. Looking at the 258. Southbridge is, without knowing for sure, probably one of the more far flung places that we've had a bowler come here from. I think it's probably the farthest. Uh, of course, Claremont, where Steve Vadney is from, is also a considerable distance away, but Southbridge is uh, south of Worcester. But Steve, we're still in the same area code. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Vadney, that is. Well, Steve's looking at 3, 5, 6, 10 on the right with the 7 pin in the left hand corner. If he shows us a shot here, he'll win $25 in bonus money. Yeah, I dare say he's going to earn the 25 if he can convert this. Not sure exactly where he was going with that one. It was in between, anyways. I don't know if he was take, taking the wood or playing, actually playing the three pin. He trails by 16. I want to make mention of owner. Bob Agree and all the folks at Wyndham Tool Company on Main Street in Salem, New Hampshire for once again being our presenting, our, our participating sponsor on this series of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We hope you'll stop by Wyndham Tool and check out their full line of general merchandise including building materials and tools but a whole lot more than just tools and all at great prices. So please stop by the Wyndham Tool Company in Salem. Big strike in the ninth. Crossed over on the Brooklyn side that time. It was able to trip the six pin out of there. Ball spinning and turning, and boy, nine of them just flew out of there, and he was able to trip the six. Ball breaks from right to left. Turns the ball over a little bit. Looks the same type of ball right there. Everything but the five. And he is uh, pumped up right now. He's really firing the ball. Yes. So Steve will have a chance at bonus money here in the 10th. Just another whole hum 140 or 150. <laughs> and again, he was 84 through 6, going along at 120, 125 clip, and then all of a sudden, spare in the 7th, 10 box, spare, a strike spare, and 6 fill gives him a 147, I believe. That's it. Wow. Just 4 tenths of a pin over his average here on the program. Pretty consistent. Steve Vadney needs to hang a couple of marks up here just to make the task a little bit easier. Let's see, there's one. There is one. Don't count this man out. <laughs> no, not a, for a minute until it's mathematically over. Steve has been here too many times. He's been through the wars, so. You have to beat a guy like Steve Adney. Not much of a break off that ball. Six. Leads himself to five, four, five, seven, eight. Play the three. Tried to triangle, tried to get the four pin to jump off the eight into the five, but cut it too sharply and missed everything. Or the eight in and the uh, five. 
gives himself a 10 and 121. And the difference is 26 at the end of one game. We'll be back with more on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Don't go away. We'll have $20 and some brand new bowling balls on the line in our bonus ball contest at the end of the show. So we hope you have your postcards with us. If not, here's how you do it. Regular size postcards only, please. Include your name, your full address, and a number from 1 to 10. That number is the number of pins you think will drop in the bonus ball at the end of the show. And if you match the number of pins that drop, then you win the jackpot. Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087 is the address. Steve Vadney will start this second game with a nine drop. Spare in the first. Last uh, year, oh, turn. there's a tough break, a one on the spare. He turned away as soon as he threw the ball. He knew it was going to be off target, but he couldn't even steal a half Worcester. He just takes off just a two pin. And follows it right up. Oh, no, just caught the head pin. Same thing is happening this week as the previous weeks, Doug. It doesn't seem that anyone can throw three or four marks in a row against uh, Steve Reno. That only happened, I believe, once with uh, Steve Lavery. Well, Steve Reno has been with us now for seven games. This is his eighth in the three weeks. And through seven games, he's trailed for only three boxes in a match. And that was the first three boxes last week against Steve Lavery. He has just been very consistent, putting the pressure on right from the start, and he's been very effective with the lead. And he's got a lead again here today. Looking at two pins. The three and the nine, a piece of wood right next to the three pin, a hop, skip, and a spare. <laughs> Actually dropped that one just before the foul line, but was on target anyways. Matches a spare already put up by Steve and can increase his lead by dropping anything more than a one. And make it seven, watch out, going down. Almost a domino effect. Leaves himself just the four and seven. Eight pin drop on the spare. No, oh, he's doing it again. <laughs> Two in a row for Steve Reno. That's eight marks in 12 boxes. Head pin again is Steve Vadney. For the spare, yes. You could almost sense that that was going to be a spare. It's a matter of the five pin was going to go because the others cleared out pretty fast. And Steve needs to mount some good fills and a series of marks. Oh, there's another big ball, and this one is a nine drop, leaving the five pin, and he'll have a clear shot at it. Real test, single pin for a mark, trying to make it two in a row. Steve doesn't miss many of those. So he sets himself up for some bonus money, as is Steve Reno right now. Got two in a row. Just clipping the head pin. Another eight fill on the spare. Gives him 36 after two. And this time a little bit of a split in the two and the seven. No wood to help. For $25, no. Steve Vadney breathe the sigh of relief. String is broken at, broken at two this time and he already has a spare nine up so he can get back some of these pins in this game. Still trails by 31 overall. Bonus money, of course, for the bowlers for three marks in a row, $25, and 
and an extra 25 for each additional mark in a row. And the money, courtesy of Val's Surplus, Route 111 in East Hampstead, New Hampshire. And Steve Reno has uh, picked up $225 in bonus money the last two weeks. He's got another 25 already here today, and he starts a new stretch with a mark up in the fourth. Both bowlers, marks to work on when we return for the middle game here on Stars and Strikes. Here are the winning numbers from last night's Tri-State Megabucks drawing. All right, Steve Vadney on a mark. Seven. Well, you just, all you can do here is hit the wood in front of the two and the four and hope we get some sidewall action. Oh, two pieces. <laughs> so, just misses bonus money. Sixty-six half for Steve. Reduces the lead temporarily, anyways, to 24. Boy, another nice pocket hit, and again the five pin. Still looking for his first strike. We've seen Steve Bowl uh, a lot, not only here, but elsewhere as well. He, he doesn't seem to be uh, a guy that, that throws a lot of strikes necessarily, although certainly when he's hot, I imagine he can string them together, but he's primarily a shot maker. He is. He's more on the... Uh... Yes, speaking of strikes. <laughs> Steve Reno, strike on spare. And you see the final result there. Yeah, Steve uh, Vadney is more of a you know, precision type bowler. Doesn't have a lot of speed on the ball like a lot of bowlers. So he didn't carry that extra pin, but he certainly can make the shots. And right now, Steve Reno is combining accuracy and speed. Deadly combination. 2-5 left for bonus money. No, he's going to slide by. In. Get the, you know you must be bowling good when you miss one and the crowd starts ooing and eyeing like <laughs> he's human. <laughs> he does miss him once in a while. 40 pin advantage for Steve Reno. Steve Vadney will cut into that with a fill on the spare in the sixth. Again on the head pin. Maybe a little full that time. He's going to be looking at the 2-4, and a piece of wood nestled right in next to it, which should help. Just sweep it right into the 2 and the 4. Done. And again, two in a row. He's yet to grab some bonus money. Oh, well, he did. No, he's done it three times. But he's yet to get that third one for the bonus money. I don't know if he's actually thinking about that as much as thinking about getting back into this match. A little full again, same two pins, two and the four. But this time, you've got to be very careful. Well, got to be real careful, because that wood is behind the two pin. And I'm afraid that it might be a... Uh... Whoa! Actually, the wood helped. $25 in bonus money. Watch. Yeah, the wood actually took the four pin out of there. I was afraid he was hit the full, two pin full and uh, dead in the shot and leave the four pin standing. Well, Steve Vadney has put two marks up there. Let's see if he gains any ground. Against these two boxes of Steve Reno. He will in this box. Steve takes a nine. And it drops it to 23, as you can see. Steve has gone no longer than three boxes at any time in three weeks without a mark. <laughs> That's
that's incredible. And he's got a good shot of keeping that stat intact. Leaving just the eight pin. Everyone's saying, get out of there. And they're trying to direct the wood away from, or at least give him a clear shot at the eight pin. And I don't think it's going to happen. But you know, they both meet. He might drive the ball right straight through them. Yeah, it depends on how it deflects. Right. And it doesn't go airborne and go up over the eight pin. At the time, sometimes you want to take a little speed off the ball, but that's hard to do sometimes. Well, the ball was on its way out, but it caught that eight pin. So he matches the mark already up by Steve Vadney. Final two frames for Steve Vadney. 112, as you can see, through eight plus the ball. Got a hurry. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> Well, wow. Steve threw his hands up like, I'm doing all this wrong. I'm trying to hit the head pin. <laughs> yeah. Once in a while, you get away with something like that. But uh, now to take advantage of it. Well, this is it. This is, you know, probably one of the tougher spares because you know you got a big break. Leaving just the head pin. Gee, I can't miss this. I want to make it, take it full advantage of it. And he does. And $25 more. $25 mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Steve will take a few more. He now has 11 marks, all of them spares. And this is where you usually come back now and bury one in the pocket and throw either a nine pin drop or a strike. Mm. Not quite, seven, and he's gonna have a testy one here in the end. Three, six, and the four pin on the left. Trying to split the three, six, or inside of the three and come off the wall. Trying watch to out, it. watch <laughs> out. Oh my, Steve thought he had it, I think. He was ready for it. A 148 for Steve Vatnay and a 269 total through two. Now the question is, will 148 be enough to make up any ground? <laughs> Steve Reno could get up into that area if he puts a couple of more marks up. Oh, and he's got a good shot at it. Nine drop on a spare. Dangerous man right now because he's pulling with a lot of confidence too. And and Steve Vadney threw everything he had at him for 148, and it's not going to be enough, I don't think, to gain any pins. Well, whoa, wow! <laughs> Turnaround's fair play. <laughs> Two pin for a spare. This is a $25 shot. Bonus money if he gets it, and he's got it. And he'll be up over 150 again, most likely. He already is at 137 through nine. Remember, the electronic scoreboard will not add that up until we finish this 10th frame, but he actually has 137 through nine, 147 in the 10th, plus this ball. And you can add in eight more for a 155 and a 302 through two games. Ho oh, hum for Steve Reno. <laughs> A 33-pin lead, one game to go, and we'll have it for you on Stars and Strikes right after these words. Letters, we love to get letters here on Stars and Strikes, and if you'd like to drop us a line, if you've got a comment, a question, a criticism, a bowling hint you'd like from Dan Murphy, our <laughs> resident expert, then uh, we'd love to hear from you. So drop us a line at uh, Stars and Strikes, WNDS TV 50, 50 Television Place, Derry, New Hampshire, 03038. And we can not, unfortunately, take the time on the air to respond to all your letters, but uh, we do love to hear from you. And the more appropriate ones we do refer to on the air. And there's, it's sitting room only here at. Uh, <laughs> Park Place lanes for this one. Just grab a piece of floor space and get an eye on the action. Some of the youngsters here watching the match. It's kind of dangerous, though, sitting down there at lane 22 like that other little kid. We had to get him out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Half Worcester right, Steve Reno. Dottie. Dottie's going to get some more track work in. Yep. 
I hate this, she says. I heard that, Dottie. <laughs> <laughs> She was pretty fast under that masking at that time when he was going to... And she narrowly Ooh. avoided getting hit by the ball yeah. coming back on the return. She very nimbly avoided that. She's got all the moves down, folks. Steve Reno takes a seven. Wow. That is his I first... I was going to say. <laughs> that is his first box below an eight in three weeks. And... He had had only two eight boxes to that point, and he comes right back with a strike. So much for that slump. I guess he gets upset with those seven boxes. <laughs> Just kicks out the four and the eight. Well, it'll be interesting if Steve Reno, in fact, goes on to win this match and has a shot at the ladder championship next week. It'll be interesting to see if he throws another big score next week because, of course, the winning score next week is very important because it helps determine the seating for the Tournament of Champions. But I'm sure Steve's got to be thinking, hey, <laughs> I started the number four spot. If I even get a chance to qualify for the tournament, it probably won't matter to him much what the score is. Well, it's, it's no secret we tape a lot of shows in a day. The, in fact, the entire ladder is done in one day. We tell you to come down and watch the taping. And uh, normally, I would say fatigue has to be setting in. However, he has thrown so many marks that uh, he's not throwing that many balls down there, those pins. Until... Uh Steve Reno put these two wins together the last two weeks. You have to go back to November to find anyone in singles competition who's been able to get two wins, as many as two wins back to back. Ryan McKinley won three matches before losing to Gary Carrington in that series championship. And uh, since then, it's been one win and out for uh, all the bowlers who've been winning matches here. So Steve is on a heck of a roll for himself. And this is the highest two-game total he's had in during the other two previous weeks that he's been with us. 302, as you can see. Two games. So he has the chance to have this be his highest three games. And he is just firing that ball. Talk to most of the bowlers, when you're in a groove, it just feels that you could throw it as hard as you can and you're still gonna hit your object pin. You're just in one of those grooves that baseball pitchers get into, that's why they batter step out of the batter's box trying to break their rhythm and stuff. You can't do it here. Watch out. Just try to get by the wood, but clipped it, and deflected away from the six and 10. That cost him $25 in bonus money. Each bowler has $50 so far. The runner-up in this match will receive a check for $250. Winner, of course, goes on for a chance at the big money next week against our number one seed, Paul Berger. Oh, Steve Vadney needs some strikes. At least marks, but he has got to start marking and he's got to start stringing them together, together to get back into this one. Still looking for his first strike, correct? 12 spares. Sometimes when they do come, they come in bunches for you. Oh, however, whoa. I was going to say, that was a good looking ball going in. It's tough. He's got seven pin drop, but then the eight fell, and it, as it fell, it knocked down the seven. So gives him nine and a spear, and can't afford to miss any of these. He doesn't. And we will take a break with Steve Vadney putting up two in a row. He'll work on that when we come back, but Steve Reno gets a chance, too, and he continues to bowl very well. Don't go away. Don't forget, it won't be long now before our third annual Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions will get underway here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. first week of the tournament here on 
WNDS TV will be Sunday, April 21st. And it'll run for five weeks. Well, that well, pin will not count. No. That pin will not count. Actually threw the ball so hard, they hit the curtain, the curtain came forward and knocked down the seven pin. Now the rule is for a pin to be knocked down, the ball has to hit fair play first. So that gives them a five. Ball must hit either a standing pin or a piece of wood in play before knocking another pin down. Oh my. First a five box and now this. We might mention the tape date for the uh, right. Tournament of Champions also is on Tuesday now. It's just a little different from our Sunday tapings. Tuesday, March 26th. And as we mentioned uh, a couple weeks ago, or last week, get here early. Because we expect a big crowd. Well, Steve gets out of that very nicely with a 10. But here is an opening for Steve Vadnick. I suppose we should mention our last tape day for our last ladder, too. And uh, that was March 24th. That's right, two weeks from today. That's right. That'll be our last regular series. We'll get our final qualifier for the Tournament of Champions out of that group. That close to a strike for Steve Vadnay, but uh, hang on here, because if he marks here and happens to throw a big fill on another mark, he's going to make a serious run. At Steve Reno. He drops it immediately, drops it from 40 to 26 pins. Big fill here, and he's going to be within two marks of Steve Reno. Watch out. Oh, he just missed the head pin. He picks up 12 pins, though, in that one frame. So the lead is now down to 19. Boy, this would be a very big mark in this sixth box. And he's got it. Wow. That bonus. is a big shot right there. $25 in bonus money. 50. 50 right? overall in the sequence and oh, 100 mm -hmm. You're right. for the show for Steve. But more importantly, that cuts the lead down to single figures, maybe, going into the final four boxes. And, and this I'll is the first, uh, the first sign of a problem we've seen well, Steve sort of a have. struggle yeah, yeah for the couple boxes now and and the fact he's struggling by hitting the head pin too this will be four mark four boxes in a row without a mark for Steve the first time he's done that in three weeks just an incredible sequence but he gets the 10 he's had two very difficult tens the last two boxes Having a little trouble with the reset on lane 32. And, and again, through the middle, through the middle again. again. I believe that's four boxes in a row now that he's hit the head pin and got spread eagle, spread eagle. This time, spread eagle plus the eight pin. And, uh, oh. All of a sudden. This game can be going along so great for you, and then all of a sudden turn around and bite you. <laughs> and he gets out of it with an eight. That's not a bad out either. But Steve Vadney has got a chance right here to, to actually take the lead. Each bowler has 15 marks. marks now in the match. Oh. Steve's are all spares, 15 spares. And he's oh. working on a stretch of four in a row. Obviously, he can't afford to have any opens and ooh, off target, but let's see. Well, sort of a break. Got a couple more pins than he thought he was going to get. Leaves the four horsemen to the right. One, three, six, ten, and the seven pin. Trying to keep the string alive. And is it going to go? Yes, it is. Yes. Five in a row for Steve Vadney. Another $25 in bonus money. Laid it on the inside, and then the wood turned just right to clear out the seven. And this fill will almost certainly cut the lead into single figures. The lead is now eight. In the all-important eighth frame. Two, four, 
six and ten looking at Steve, trying to split him. No, he's too far down. Needs some luck to get that one, but he can pick up another two and count. He's opposite an eight frame. Ten more. So we're down to the final two here, and the difference is six. Six pins is the lead for Steve Reno, and he will bowl first. So one mark and a decent fill will force Steve Vadney to get two marks. And again, on the head pin, this time, well, if you want to consider it a better lead than the spread eagle, but still a very difficult shot in the three, the four, and the seven pieces of wood next to the three, which he'll try to play and sweep everything across toward the four and seven. Well, actually played on the inside, or that's where the ball hit. So he's going to be open in the ninth. So whatever he does, Steve Adney will have a chance when he gets up for his ninth in the tenth. Could be two very important pins here. Steve waiting for that wood to slide over, and now it's moving again. So he'll wait for it. Should be in position to sweep it over, however. It does for the ten box. That gives him 400. But this was much more of a struggle than it appeared it would be at the top when he had those two marks in a row. Missing the head pin entirely that time. Well, the first time he's missed a head pin in a long time with the first ball, but it's his best spare relief he's had in a long time. Four horsemen left. One, two, four, and seven. A piece of wood in behind that should help keep all the pins in line for him. He missed the head pin. So Steve Vanney is going to need at least one mark. And all these are important because this will determine the fill on the spare or strike that's if Steve Adney does get one. And there's two more very important pins. 106 and a three-string total, 408 so for Steve, Steve Reno. Steve Adney needs 24 pins to tie, I believe. 25 pins in these two boxes to win. That's right. 139 will be the... Excuse me, 149. No, I was right the first time. 139 to tie, 140 to win. He's off the head pin, but the decent break leaves himself the one, the three, the six, and in the back, the nine. Remember, he needs a mark, five or better, and then a 10 box. 25 pins total he needs to win. There's a piece of wood in the back. Outside. Whoa, he gets it on the outside. Okay, there it goes, final frame. He wants a little cushion here, so he would want, like everything more than, anything more than five. And that that'll, wins it. That'll do it. That wins it right there for Steve Vadney. Come from a long ways away. Wow. Actually down, I believe, at one time, 40 pins, uh, 41. <laughs> Didn't need that one. Either. Boy, oh boy. You know, it's this game, I've been around it so many years and seen so many things, and, and it still amazes you how a person can go and, and throw string after string after string. And in, in this match, too, Steve Reno looked like he was on the groove and everything, and all of a sudden it turns around on you. 151 for Steve Vadney, a terrific comeback as he throws a 420 to come from 41 pins behind in the final game to win the match by 12. Doug Brown and Dan Murphy back here on Stars and Strikes. We have just a couple of minutes to talk to the bowlers, so let's have a round of applause for Steve Reno, first of all. Slide right in here, Steve, so we can uh, get a good look at you. Here's a check that I know you'll want to get, although it's yeah, probably yeah. not not the big one you would have oh, liked, but uh, right. congratulations right. in any event. And uh, sometime, well, guess. it was a terrific uh, match again, again, over it 400. Was a real good match. I couldn't have lost to a better person. <laughs> <laughs> what? Obviously, you were hitting the head pin. You were throwing the ball pretty well, even during that stretch in the third game. What, what was the difference, do you think? Coming in too full. <laughs> too full, not picking pins. Well, again, uh, terrific job. Uh, not only the $250 there, but also $50 in bonus money. So in the three weeks, you picked up uh, about $275 in bonus money Great. as well. So Great. not a bad, 
not a bad output for you, and uh, we hope yeah. to see you back soon. Me too. I hope to All be right. back. Thank you. Very good. Thank Thanks, you. Steve Reno. And now Steve Vadne, who's been... Steve's been practicing a long time to throw this bonus ball, so uh, here he goes. <laughs> it's been a long time since Steve had a win here on Stars and Strikes, and uh, obviously he's a little out of practice. It's just four. $20 in the uh, jackpot. It's to pay us the bonus money for throwing <laughs> four. <laughs> well, it's not a match for Eugene Pepin of Lowell, Mass. So, Eugene, you'll be receiving a TV50 NHCBA desk pen. Your guess was a seven. And uh, that means we'll have $30 in the jackpot next week. And, uh, boy, it's been a long time uh, that really? you've been the second person up here. Yeah, right. Well, <laughs> you can see there. A long time for that, that ball. <laughs> it, all, Great, it, all, it all came together for you, that third game. Yeah, uh, well, you know, Stevie started out with a seven box, and I said, well, if you can throw a couple more of them, maybe I got a shot. Then he came back with a strike, and I said, how am I going to make up 31 pins with him doing that? <laughs> and uh, it just, him doing what I was doing, I think, the mm -hmm. first game, he was a little full in the head pin, not carrying the extra pin, and fortunately, breaks came my way. Well, you have uh, $125 in bonus money for uh, your work this week, and also, obviously, a chance next week uh, for the big money and the spot in the Tournament of Champions. Paul Berger will be here to challenge you. Okay, I'll be here. All right, Steve, we look forward to it. Congratulations. It's been a bit of a dry spell for Steve Vadney. He had lost four matches in a row here on Stars and Strikes, but now he'll get a shot at the big one. Uh, a fellow like him loses four matches in a row. I want to want to be the next in line because <laughs> sooner or later he's going to turn it around. It should be a great match next week between Steve and Paul Berger. We hope you are here. We're looking forward to it next Sunday at 12 noon. Steve Vadney and Paul Berger for the ladder championship and a spot in our Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Until next Sunday, Doug Brown for Dan Murphy and the whole crew. Bye-bye, everybody.